So what is a stack? It's a data structure, which means it's an architecture on how to organize data. So a stack is an abstract data type with a bounded capacity. It has a predefined capacity, a given limit, which you cannot exceed just like arrays. It is a simple data structure that allows adding and removing elements in a particular way. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say I have a pile in which I'm just throwing data inside. So Let's say I have a bunch of papers, which I would like to just organize them inside. So I have paper number one, then paper two, three, four, and the limit of my pile is five, right? So now my pile is complete. My stack is complete. And in case we want to add more papers, so let's say I would like to add the sixth one, I cannot. So this is called overflowing. I'm exceeding the capacity. So this cannot be done. One really important thing here is removing elements has its own unique way. So we numbered the papers or data that entered the pile in increasing order. So the first one that entered is going to be the last one that will leave. So let's illustrate this. Let's say I'm going to remove the pile I have right here and empty it in pile B. I start from top to bottom. So I remove five first and I put it right here. I will erase it. So stack A has four elements now, whereas stack B has one element, which is five. Now let's empty the rest in this order, so four going here to four, and then three, and then two, and then one, right? So as you can see, if I want to remove elements from my stack, it's going to be in the order that is in pile B, right? So what does that mean? It means that the first element that enters your stack is the last one that will exit your stack. And that is why it is called first in, last out. So one was the first one that entered my stack. It was on the extreme bottom, but it was the last one to exit. Whereas the last element that was in my stack, which is five, is going to be the first one extracted, therefore philo. So what stuff could we do with a stack? That's a natural question. What can we do with a stack? Well, you could push to a stack. So by pushing, I mean, uh, this is my stack again, and I have three elements, one, two, three, with, again, size five. I could insert, so I could insert let's say four to the stack this is called pushing you could pop from a stack means it is the opposite of pushing which means deleting i popped four from my stack right now you could also check if your stack is empty this would be a function that would return either a true or false true if it is empty means there's no data in my stack and false if there's at least one you could also check where your top is so let's say you have a pointer towards your elements so this is my stack again i just put one the top is on let's say index two there is nothing on two which means top is ready to insert at the second position so it, it serves as an index towards my data so in case i would want to push the number two i would have to use the top value so i could insert 20 let's say using the top index then after pushing i should increment my top to the third position and so forth so this is one property top is one property of the stack so which brings us to top position could just return the value of top so those are the elementary operations of a stack so now let's see how a stack is implemented using a class on c++ so here we're using visual studio code or vs code and let's create a file called stacks using classes.cpp so first things first let's implement a class called stack as such and my main will go somewhere here so i would have public properties so what were the properties that we talked about the first thing we have is top right which is an integer it is an integer that points at the current empty index that is ready to be filled up right that's top and you also need an array of some capacity right some certain capacity now as you can see i have all red because i didn't define capacity but capacity is a predefined constant so let's put it right here define capacity as let's say 10 okay i want a pile which cannot exceed 10 so capacity is a constant which is 10 and this array is of size 10 so that's all you need to define your stack so you need a place to put your elements which is the array a you need an index to keep track of where 
where your stack is. Now let's insert some methods, let's say a constructor, and then I would want to push, right? So push is pushing, void push. I would like to push a certain element, right? And I would also like to pop a certain element, void pop. Of course, we're not going to pass it anything because pop would pop the upper data. So we know what we need to pop. We can't pop anything in, in between. And let's say I would like to return the value that was just popped. So this is stack push pop and let's say I would like to have a boolean function to check if my stack is you know empty and if you want int where is top it returns the top value now since top is public this makes no sense right so let me remove it because I ju could just access top from right here so my stack dot top okay let's run to make sure good we have just written the skeleton of our class now let's fill in the methods so starting off with the constructor so what should be done upon constructing or instantiating an object of class stack so the first thing you need to do is initialize top to minus one because at this current time the stack is empty it has no data so top should be minus one minus one is saying that your stack is empty right or you can you can just put zero it really is how you would like to read it so if you say zero okay zero is means it's empty you could also say minus one it depends how you want to fill your stack let's work with zero so zero means it's empty so this means that if you want to check if a stack is empty all you have to do is compare top to zero if it's zero then return true right otherwise you would return a false so we're done with stack and is empty, the constructor and this function. Now we need to write push and pop. So push is a void that is a method of stack. I could also remove x from here. What should push do? It should push x to the current index, which is indexed by top. So if we need to a of top is equal to x, that's it. And you have to increment your top, right? Because your top should, you know, increment because you just filled in the current empty entry of the array a. So top should naturally increment. And there's something you would want to do here before just filling. So let me show you what I mean. Let's go back here. And let's say you're at a certain point where, so top starts here, it fills up, then top is here. Let's say you filled 10, then you filled minus 10 or minus 105, and then top is here. Let's say your stack is full, so your top would be would go up to here if it's full. We don't want that, right? So here I'll write the index, index 0, index 1, index 2, and then index 9, right? That's if my stack has capacity 10. So from 0 till 9. So my top could not be 10, right? If top not equal to capacity. So since we're here, we can add one more method, which is bool is full, right? So how do we know if a stack is full? We only have to check if my top is capacity. So return true, else you would return a false. And you know, you could just remove this condition right here and just type in is full. That would be much easier to read. Excellent. So now all we have to do is write down our pop method. So how do we test if we could pop? So similarly, as we tested, if the stack is full, you should also test for the popping if it's empty. If it's not empty, so, and here if it's not full, if it's not full, my bad. If the stack is not full, you could push. And here, if the stack is not empty, you could pop. So how do we pop? All you have to do is decrement your top so the top goes down by one and since we have to return something let's return the value that we popped so let's return a of since top has decremented by one let's return top plus one right so if we go back here and let's say i'm in this position where the stack is full so top is 10 and if i want to pop i would pop 90 so top would go down by one and i would return a of top so i should return top minus one so return a top as such and before we exit the code let's throw a message saying a top has just been 
popped. And we return this else, you should throw a message here saying stack underflow means it's empty. You cannot pop and return some minus 999. You could similarly do the same thing in push saying C out. You have just pushed X and you could throw a similar message to stack underflow, call it stack overflow. So let's test our class. So stack run to make sure all is good. And now let's check if the stack is empty. C out stack dot is empty one which is true now is it full no it's not it's, this is the zero let me just insert and the l one zero so let's fill in multiples of 10 and as you can see here we have a problem which is that stack overflow keeps on printing so since this is a void there's no return let me just insert a return right here so that it exits the code let me run again and there you have it from zero to 90. now let's check if indeed my stack is full so is it full right here and i have to see out that yes it is full now let's try popping so for in i is equal to zero let's pop out five elements stack dot pop 90 has just been popped 80 has just been popped and so on let's pop out eight elements so the last element popped is 20 let's pop 10 elements everything is popped and now 11 should give you a stack underflow and there you have it now let's check if my stack is empty stack is empty and indeed my stack is empty so this is ba basic implementation of a stack note that you could also implement stack using structures linked lists queues and so forth that's it for this lecture and i hope you enjoyed it